business of the court. John sank down in a chair. Well, I, I should have liked him to have been here. Miss Curley, ring down to Mike. Tell him what all... No one seems to realize the publicity involved in an affair of this sort. But at all the rights were publicity you. for a firm of our standing. I performed. By the time he left the stand, there could have been no reasonable doubt in anybody's mind that Paul Redfern Brand had died from carbon monoxide poisoning within eight hours of his last appearance in the office. The doctor lolloped back to his seat, and the coroner's officer produced the next witness, Paul's secretary. Miss Netley was small and dark, and affected the coiffure of a medieval page, and a blue serge dress with a white collar and cuffs. The effect aimed at with machine gun rapidity. On the evening of the third day of the month, at the invitation of Detective Inspector Tanner, I made a detailed investigation of the boiler situated in the basement of 23 Horse Collar Yard. I found no defect of any kind whatsoever. I do not see how any carbon monoxide gas could have escaped from it into the basement at any time. It was during the day before asking the court that she lived in the basement flat of number 25 Horse Collar Yard, and that her occupation was assistant caretaker with her husband of the two blocks of offices, numbers 25 and 27. At the coroner's request, she cast her mind back to the evening of the 28th. Why? There's that car started up. She paused triumphantly, and the coroner coughed. <clears throat> Perhaps you'll explain to us, Mrs. Tripper, what exactly you mean by that. I was referring to the car in the garage at number 23. She said sharply, Go on. find accent temporarily deserting her. Mm -hmm. Although, we can't hear the car in the daytime because of the traffic. Oh. After six o'clock, the crescent is so quiet, you could hear a pin drop, and you can hear the car then. So thin. Use your f***ing indicators, you f***.